Okay guys, I am going to show you how to assemble the 3S GTE head. We're going to lap the valves, we're going to put uh, the valve springs in, and I'm going to show you how to install those keepers, which, oh my god, if you've done it the old school way with this tool right here, then I feel sorry for you. Okay guys, I kind of turned my spare washer and dryer in my laundry room into a little workbench so I can work on this head because it's still pretty cold here in Michigan. And as you can see on the exhaust side I got half of it done. I didn't start on the uh, other side yet. And I figured, you know, I was looking on YouTube for a video and there's not too many that do it right. There's uh, Joe from Love Horsepower, but that's an old video and he's us using that stupid tool right here, the compression tool. Um, that thing, oh God, what a pain in the ass. And I used that thing for years. And uh, I'll show you a way better tool. It's actually a must have tool. So, all right, so taking this head apart is pretty simple, guys. Um, I guess the only thing I ha would have to say when you're taking it apart, obviously, undo the cam caps in a sequence very slowly. Doesn't have to be exact, but you don't want to crack the cam. A uh, cam is very hard metal, and it could crack with uh, not much pressure. So undo that, and getting these keepers out, uh, there's a bunch of ways to get them out guys but here is the tool you need right here guys oh my god this thing the first time I used it I I almost had an orgasm it was so good yeah that's right so it's 36050 Lyle and you open it up and we got two tools the bigger ones obviously for a bigger valves it's got a little uh, adapter right there I think that's for some European cars and then this is the one we're gonna use so as you can see if I can do this with one hand this part comes out and you can see that this has a little spring on it and that's actually the install part which works amazing guys oh my god okay but we'll get into that when I start installing them and here's the other part of the tool guys this is the remover tool this is how you get the keepers out uh, there's a magnet inside this hole and I'll show you how to use it in a second but you just kind of push it on there you can use a hammer but it works awesome man whoever, whoever designed this tool the install <laughs> and the removal part it's so simple but it works so good so whoever designed it thank you very much Okay, so guys, I just got let's run through some names of the parts so uh, those of you that are kind of doing this for the first time know what I'm talking about. So, um, these are the names I have for them. I call this the spring bucket, and that's the first thing that goes into the head. You would drop that in first, and hey guys, when you go, your, go get your head hot tank like I did, don't leave those things in. I left him in and the guy found him all. I don't know how. But uh, yeah, a little tip there. So that's the spring bucket. And this is the 3S GTE stock spring. And as you can see, the bottom's a little more compressed than the top. So the more compressed the spring is, the you always know that's the bottom. So the spring would go in the bucket. And then you have your retainer top here. And then you have the keepers that go into the retainer that clip on to the valve stem itself. And I'll show you how it all works in a second. All right guys, hopefully the camera angle will work. Uh, well, now that you got your camshafts off, I keep these uh, cam caps on 
just when I'm so I don't mess up the races uh, you, you can remove them it's e if it's easier for you to work uh, so the first thing you would do now this is on disassembly this is not assembly but you would throw a rag underneath the valve so the so the valve doesn't sink in while you're pushing this tool down so I'm gonna try to do this with the camera in the way but uh so you got it centered right there you can kind of see that and I'm gonna push down on it I can't do it with the camera in the way and there you go guys in real time uh, you kind of got to give it some force because the Toyota springs are pretty strong and you can see the keepers in there and then you you know you can see the keepers in there uh, my camera work sucks today uh, and then you can get them out with the old magnet because uh, the magnet in this tool is the, this magnet is not so strong so any other magnet will just take them right out and guys that's how you remove the keepers the easy way all right boys installing the valve seals now I'm not going with Toyota valve seals because they're just way too expensive they, they want ten dollars a piece for those or more now uh, when you can get super tech which is actually an upgrade uh, for like 15 bucks you can get you know the whole kit could you imagine paying 160 bucks for the valve seals from Toyota whatever but anyways so the super tech valve seals uh, they come in two different colors when you get the kit or the set I should say uh, you can see it says VS TS 6 I that stands for intake so the brown ones are for intake and you see it says VS TS 6e that's for exhaust so those are blue and I already have those installed that's why I can't show them to you but just remember that uh, blue is for exhaust and the brown ones are for intake you think it would be the opposite way around but nope the brown ones right here are for the intake so let's get these installed now guys I install these a lot of guys just put oil on them, they stick it in there, and then just push it with their thumb. That doesn't work for me, because I never feel it bottoming out. So I'll show you the technique I use if the camera can pick it up. Alright guys, so the first thing we're going to do, we're just going to dip this valve seal in some regular engine oil. I got some in a little cup over here, and I just like to coat it, coat it in oil, like that, so it's inside there. And then, I, where's my magnet tool? Okay, I just stick the magnet tool on the very top of it and watch that little spring. Make sure that spring is on there. And I do them like this for a reason. Uh, you'll, you'll see why. Uh, so you stick it in there. It just helps me. And then I kind of start, start pushing it on with, with my thumb. And here's what I do. I take a three-quarter, uh, a three, uh, Jesus Christ, a three-eighths extension, and I take a light hammer, and right on the edge of the metal, and this, this three-eighths uh, extension fits it perfect on the metal, so you're not hitting the rubber, so I can just tap it in there, and just keep tapping on each side you can hear it's all metal like I'm not touching that rubber or spring at all and that way I can I can kind of feel it bottoming out like with my thumb just pushing it on I can't feel it I mean I check it again with my fingers but you know so there you go guys and I'll just yeah that's in there and you can kind of feel as you're tapping, I use a light uh, body hammer, you can kind of feel with a light hammer as soon as it bottoms out. And that way, I know it's down all the way. So there you go. Do that 15 more times and your valve seals are installed. But make sure you oil them up, guys. Alright guys, lapping the valves. 
so much easier than you think. Okay, so when you disassemble your head, mark everything, guys. Like, number one valve would go into the number one slot. Don't get those mixed up, because you're going to have a hard time lapping them. All the heat sinks this metal together so that it has to be assembled in the same valve one needs to go back into valve one slot so okay and I always you know go number one by the front of the engine obviously so we're gonna grab the number one valve and I'll try to get a good angle here guys so you can see what I'm doing oh by the way this is the valve grinding compound I'm using um, it's Permatex, they, they got their shit together. I used to use a two-part, like one was coarse, one was fine. It doesn't really make a difference. This one actually works really well and it's, it works really quick. So there you go, there's the compound. So, we're gonna take the valve. I actually grinded this valve already, but I'll try to show you guys what I did. So, we'll grind it again. And, Put your compound all around the valve then you put it all around the seat you don't need a whole lot of this man this uh, permatech stuff is works pretty quick too okay take your valve tool suction it on there stick it in there then start start the lapping then every time I turn it for a while I you're gonna have to wipe this suction cup off a little bit every time and possibly the valve too I lift it up then turn it again lift it up turn it again and I wipe my tool off and guys, this does not take long if your valves aren't that bad. It depends how, you know, you can see the pits in your valves, um, but these weren't that bad. All right. So, I'll show you what a flush, freshly lapped valve looks like. Wipe all the grinding compound off of the valve. Wipe it out of the seat. And guys, you can see, I don't know if you, the camera can pick this up, but this little edge is very smooth. And, you, and if, when that's consistent all the way around, like this one, it's all lapped. So there you go. That's how you lap a valve. Do that 15 more times and all the valves are lapped. All right, guys installing the keepers we'll do it on the same part so you got your you got your spring bucket in there the buckets in there you put your spring in the way I told you to with the most compressed part down that's the bottom then you take your keeper and you can see that these little keepers have a fat and skinny on the fat end always goes up top I guess the wider, fatter, whatever you want to call it. And I just put them in like this. You can see. And I just set it in there. Alright, now here's where this tool comes in. I'll put the handle back on, the remover tool. Oop, wrong one. Okay. And as you can see, I'm just going to take the tip of it put it into the keeper and you really got to center this up guys um, so I'll try to do this it might take a couple times but I done the whole side of this head in under five minutes and with that other tool at least an hour at least and that's if it, on a good day with that tool so here we go I'm pushing down okay see it didn't work that time of course because I got the camera going and then I'm gonna do it one more time there you go boys second try look at that 
Yeah, and what I like to do sometimes, guys, if they're, you know, if they're not sitting right, like these are sitting right, but if they're not, just just put this over, push it down, and tap it with a hammer a little bit. Tap the back end of this, just very lightly, and it should set those keepers in perfect. But, oh my God, if you guys ever done this, like I said, with the Nightmare Tool over there, you know why I'm so excited about this thing. All right, boys, the top buckets, the shims, and the cams, obviously. So, these top buckets are pretty much all the same size, but these shims are in different thicknesses, so that's why you mark them. Uh, if it came good from the factory, most likely you're okay, but if you get these mixed up, you're kind of screwed. So that's why you mark them. So the shim goes in the top, and they come in all kinds of different thicknesses, and we're going to check the valve clearance once we put the cam in. So those kind of snap in. You can see they go right over the spring there. All right, boys. All the top buckets and shims are in their proper places, all oiled up real well. And we're going to lay the cam down. Um, I'm not going to use assembly lube on this. I've always just used oil. It works fine for me. Uh, I don't think it's a huge deal. There you go. Top of the cam with the holes facing up on this exhaust side. Fits in there pretty well. And guys, make sure you torque this to exactly 14 foot-pounds. If there's one thing on the engine <laughs> that is critical, to be torqued right it's these caps right here all right guys here are the cam caps got this one sitting on there already now this is considered number one cam cap on the front of the engine that's considered number one as you can see the others are all marked with an arrow the arrow always points towards the front of the engine you can see that says two and it, you can see there's an E on there also for exhaust so E2, E3, E4, and some of them aren't marked so well. Some of them look like eyes, so it's kind of crazy. So don't get these mixed up as well. E5, and kaboom. E3, E4, E5. Alright guys, we got the cam torqued down to 14 foot-pounds in the proper sequence. And I'm just pulling up the specs for the valve clearance. And as you can see, this is a page out of the Big Green Book, guys. Yeah, Chris Fix, get out of there. Okay, so it says cold engine, exhaust, 0.20 to 0.30 millimeters. And it also has it in inches, uh, 008 to 0012. So what I'm going to start out with, I don't know if the camera can pick up my feeler gauge, but it's a 25, it's a, in inches, it's a 0 ton. So, you're going to want to make sure the lobe of the cam, the pointy part is the lobe, guys. If you didn't know that, you should if you're putting this head together. <laughs> so, okay, just make sure that it doesn't have to be stickling, sticking uh, straight up, but try to get it in the 11 to 1 o'clock position and you take your feeler gauge and I know the lighting kind of sucks but as you can see this is a 25 and remember the spec was between 30 and 20 and this fits in this fits in there nice nice and snug so you know we're within spec so guys you do that 15 more times and guys if you're slightly out of spec it's not a huge deal but just remember, the looser, the looser it is, the more noise you're going to have in your engine, and the tighter it is, you could possibly burn a valve, so keep that in mind. But hey guys, I think I'm going to call the video right there, I'm going to try to get this head together. Uh, I figure I'd stop and make a video for you guys. Um, hope it was informative, and uh, hey guys, take it easy. And pick up this tool if you don't have it must have even if you use it once and guys you know nobody sponsors me but I love telling you about good tools and bad tools anyways take it easy guys